in this video I want to talk about the equations that you're going to have to know for gravity in A level physics, in A2 physics to be exact. Um, so these are all the formulas that you're going to have to know. Essentially for gravity there isn't that much you need to memorize, but you have to be able to distinguish what gravitational field strength is and how different is that from gravitational force. You also have to be able to uh, distinguish what that is from gravitational potential and how that's different from gravitational potential energy. So these are all things to do with memorizing the definitions, um, understanding which one is a measurement for per unit value and which one isn't. And you can do that just by revising it a couple of times. It really isn't that difficult to understand. So I think we can start with the gravitational field strength G. So this is something that we've learned really early onwards. If you've done like your GCSE or your like O levels, then you've probably already heard of this. Gravitational field strength is the gravitational force exerted per unit mass on a small object placed at that point in the field. So it's basically how much force does one kilogram of an object experience when you place it within a gravitational field. So in the gravitational field of the Earth that's near the surface, G is going to be 9.81 newtons per kilogram. So every uh, kilogram is going to experience 9.81 newtons. So this is the equation for that. G is basically force per mass of the small object. And this is the unit. For Newton's law of gravitation, uh, now we're going to learn how to calculate F, which we hadn't done before. So Newton's law of gravitation basically states that any two point masses attract each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. So if you have two point masses, for instance over here um, and over here, they're going to be attracting each other, and remember it's going to be the same force because a force is an interaction and it goes from one side and it's the same for the opposite direction, so it's equal and opposite. So this force is going to have a magnitude, and let's say this has a mass m, this has a mass small letter m. It's going to be directly proportional to the product of their masses, mm and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. Let's say the square is denoted by r, then we can put the square of their separation as r squared. So f is directly proportional to um, mm over r squared. Now, if you want to take away this um, proportional sign, then you can make you can attach a constant of proportionality, and the constant of proportionality in this case is something called g. So this is the universal gravitational constant, and you can find it in the first page of A-levels exam sheets. They have like a certain list of values, so you don't have to memorize it, but it's gmm over r squared. So you can literally get this formula from the... Uh, the word formation of the Newton's law of gravitation, which I find pretty neat. So this is the equation, F equals gmm over r squared. Now, if you want our new definition for g, gravitational field strength, um, remember that g is the force divided by m. So this is the force. So we just have to divide this whole thing by small letter m. Um, because this is, you know, let's say the force is created by big letter m and the small object that is placed in big letter M's field is small letter M. So basically we can cross these two out and that gives us G is G big letter M over R squared. So for instance, you know, just to make the last point clear, big letter M would be the earth and then it has a gravitational field and small letter M would be um, whatever you place in its field. So that's the distinguishment between the capital letter and the small letter m. So now we can get into gravitational potential. Gravitational potential has to do with energy. Um, gravitational potential energy is something that is completely different from gravitational potential. They're not the same thing, but they have to do with each other. So the gravitational potential at a point is the work done in bringing unit mass from infinity to that point. So for this, I just want to bring your attention to one thing, is its unit mass. 
So everything has gravitational potential energy. Um, you can think of gravitational potential as like gravitational potential energy per unit mass. Um, I think that will make it clear. So it's like you bring one kilogram of a certain object from infinity to that point. At infinity, um, that means that this unit mass is an infinite meters away from any other mass. That means that there is completely no gravitational force acting on it because everything is infinite meters away from this object. So there's no gravity. Um, this is when it has a gravitational potential of zero. And once it starts to enter a field, it will get negative energy because you obviously it's going to be attracted to other masses. And so you're going to have a negative value for this. Um, the gravitational potential is for the unit mass. And if you want to change this to gravitational potential energy, you will just have to multiply this by whatever uh, your certain object weighs in mass. So or for a point mass, the gravitational potential is this is a Greek letter phi, and we have to put the negative here because the mass is going to be attracted to other masses. So you don't actually have to do work. Uh, it's going to, you're going to have to do work to bring it away to infinity. So anything that is closer to a mass than infinity is going to have a negative um, gravitational potential. So for a point mass, the gravitational potential is negative gm over r. And remember that this is um, the big letter m and not the small letter m. And this is for a unit mass. So the unit mass does not have to be a part of this equation because it is going to be 1. Um, and now that we have these equations, we can also take a look at some orbital periods and orbital velocities. So you might have learned in centripetal motion that uh, there is a certain equation for centripetal motion, motion and for centripetal force, and that's going to be of the essence over here. So the orbital period of a satellite is basically the time taken for one orbit. And to put short, the equation for that is this. T squared is this whole entire thing, but you don't have to memorize this because you can very easily derive it. So we know that centripetal force is going to equal gravitational force. If a certain thing is in orbit, that means that the centripetal force is going to be the gravitational attraction to whatever object it is orbiting. So it's essential that you write this down. And then we know that um, velocity is 2 pi r over the orbital period, right? So that's the circumference over the time taken. And we also are aware of from the centripetal force that centripetal force is the mv squared over r. So we can rearrange this. We know that v squared is fr over m just by rearranging this to this. And now we can substitute this into this equation. Um, by doing this, we get this equation. So we have, you know, uh, we can square this whole thing and then equate this part to this. And then if we arrange it here and there, we finally get the equation that we wanted to find. So your first step is to equate centripetal force to gravitational f and to use this equation, which really is just intuitive. You don't really need to memorize that. And finally, the orbital speed of a planet or a satellite is g m over r, and that is part of this equation as well. You can also derive the same thing from that. So that's about it for gravi gravitational formulas that you have to know for A-level physics. Again, it's not that much of a hindrance in understanding a very difficult concept, but I feel like the difficulty lies in being able to distinguish what gravitational potential is, how it's different from gravitational force and gravitational field strength and gravitational potential energy. And I feel like that is the most confusing part of the entire chapter. And that can be, you know, that can be solved through simple memorization. So I hope this was helpful. And for other similar videos on physics, do go check out the rest of my channel. Thank you for watching.